Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to analyze the stock of Adobe. I'm going to do some financial statement analysis and a discounted cash flow technique and come up with an intrinsic value for the company and see if it's a good time to buy their stock. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. I'm a business school professor interested in accounting and finance. So if you're into investing and that kind of thing, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button to check out more videos like this one. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so Adobe is a software company. Depending on what your job is, you might know a lot or very little about how they make their money. I mean, we all know about Adobe Acrobat Reader. That's how you open PDF files. But they also got Photoshop and a slew of other nice software here. Using their most recent data, they generated about $12.8 billion in revenue. Most of that came from their digital media segment with just 24% coming from the digital experience segment and 4% from publishing and advertising. But for me, I kind of lump it all together. They're really a software company. They're definitely international with only 58% of their total revenues coming in the Americas and most of that being in the US, by the way. They got 26 coming from Europe, Middle East, and Africa and 16% from the Asia Pacific region. The company actually doesn't have the most attractive margins in all of their segments. If you look at digital media, they generate a ton of revenue, but they don't keep a lot of profit. Whereas I like this digital experience segment where they have a really fat profit margin. Just look at the revenue compared to the gross profit and you can see they keep a good chunk of the money they bring in from that. Now before we have a deep dive in the company's financials, let's just have a quick look here. The company is pretty resilient from the pandemic, of course. It's one of those software companies. It's up about 30% over the past year. However, last week it really slid, going down almost 3%. Hopefully we can catch a deal here. It's trading at about 40 times next period's earnings, which is you know a fairly rich valuation, but they are still growing. It's about a $220 billion company right now. Let's have a quick look at their balance sheet. I see they are very under levered there with a total liabilities to assets ratio of just 45%. If we just look at their debt and we exclude their current liabilities, you're looking at a debt to assets ratio of 17%. Pretty darn low. Current ratio is 1.48, so their current assets can cover their current liabilities 1.48 times. I'm just looking to be above 1, I think 1.5 here, pretty pretty healthy there. Interest coverage ratio is just redonkulous. Their interest expense is like 1 36th of their profits before taxes. Very healthy, no solvency concerns here. About a quarter of all their assets are just cash. So if they wanted to, they could just pay off their debt anytime they choose. Extremely healthy. Let's have a look at their income statements for the past six years here. And I'm just dividing every number by revenue in that year. This is called a vertical analysis. So, okay, let's check out the gross profit. And you're looking at a very healthy gross profit. Of course, they sell software. So the cost of revenues or cost of goods sold there, very low. But look at their operating income. Also pretty darn healthy there. Coming in at, you know, it's, it's steadily going up actually if you look at it. It was 18.8 and now it's 32.9% in just six years. Very healthy. And finally, the net income margins. Pretty similar. Um, a little unusual in this past year. We had some kind of negative income tax expense. Must have gotten a refund there, so that bumped it up to 40%. I don't expect it to be 40% going forward. Here is a DuPont analysis. Check out my video in the description below if you want to learn more about this. But if you don't know what it is, it's actually pretty simple. We take return on equity, very important measure as we are the equity holders when we own their stock. We just want to see how much income they generate for the equity we put into the company. And we break it into its three parts. So what I see here is ROE that's steadily increasing. Um, again, I think this past year was a bit of a fluke. I do not expect 50% ROE going forward. But if they can just keep it at 30, that's very good. It's made up of three parts. Check them out individually. 
you see net income margin there steadily going up and you know somewhere around say 27 percent would be normal very healthy that means for every dollar of sales they keep about 27 cents in profits very good asset turnover is actually a little low again i, I want to see higher than that so for example 0.62 for every dollar of assets they have in place they're only able to generate 62 cents in sales that's rather inefficient and it's probably driven by that pile of cash on their balance sheet remember about a quarter of all their assets are just cash so i'd really rather they just use those use that pile of cash to buy their own shares back or something that would bump up the asset turnover and bump up the roe equity multiplier has been going up but not dramatically again very under levered company so even though the ROE is 30% and you're going to say, okay, that's pretty good, but not amazing. Just consider how low the equity multiplier is, guys. If they double their leverage, they could have a 60% ROE. So I really like their business. So the company actually doesn't require heavy reinvestments, as you may think. They have taken a lot of their profits and used it to buy their own shares back, as you can see here with the modified payout ratio. Now, of course, the payout ratio is zero because they don't do dividends, but the modified payout ratio looks to be averaging around 16 or 17%. So that tells me that they have some extra cash to throw around, and I like to see that. Here is the company's revenue growth over time. You can see why it's trading at 40 times next period's earnings. This company is definitely growing although not super dramatically in the past year, going from just $11 billion to about $12.8 billion in revenues. But still incredible growth, especially considering it was a pandemic year where a lot of their business customers may have shut their doors. They were still able to grow over $1 billion in revenues. What's really impressive is that even though revenues just went up about $1.7 billion, net income has gone up by quite a bit more going from about $2.9 billion to $5.2 billion in this past year. Okay guys, so Adobe is obviously a very impressive business model. Like a lot of tech companies, they have that network effect going on, whereas more and more people use their software, you're kind of forced to use it yourself. Their balance sheet is immaculate, so it's just really a wonderful company, and I definitely want to invest in it. I gotta make sure I'm not overpaying though. I am willing to pay a bit more. It's better to buy a wonderful business at a fair price than it is a fair business at a wonderful price. But I'm still not willing to overpay. So let's use an intrinsic valuation model, the free cash flow to equity model, and try to figure out what is a fair value for Adobe stock. So to really forecast future earnings and ultimately future free cash flows, we've got to start with the most basic input, what are your revenues going to be? And for that, I turn to analyst forecast data, which we have many analysts following this company. You got about 22 analysts and then 21 for the following year. And they're forecasting about 18 and then 14 and a half percent growth in revenue. The year after that, you've got some analysts forecasting about 12.35 percent revenue growth. So I'm going to use these estimates and kind of map out my path for Adobe and see if we can just generate their free cash flows from equity and ultimately fair value. Okay, so here's kind of the path I see Adobe going down. I've plugged in the analyst estimates for the first three years. Afterward, we really have to do our own path here. I'm assuming initially that growth will slow down, you know, just about 10%, then maybe 8% for the next three years. After that period of time, I'm assuming growth just drops to 2.5% per year in perpetuity. This gives me a stream of revenues. Next thing I need to do is generate net income. So to get from revenues to net income, I need to know my net income margin. For every dollar of revenues I get, how much do I get to keep in profit? So for that, I've gone with kind of a historical recent history average here of about 28%. I am assuming that they're going to gain economies of scale and increase this margin over time, as we see they have done when we did our vertical analysis. So let's just say they can put on half a percent every year and kind of top out at about 32.5% margins. I think that's fair. 
That gets us to net income. Finally, we have to estimate some kind of reinvestment rate. They need to continue to reinvest back into the company to generate growth. I am assuming a more modest reinvestment rate for this type of company. The reason is that a lot of their, quote, reinvestments aren't really classified as reinvestments in financial statements. I'm talking about research and development expenses. So they're not really a manufacturer. They're not going to have to buy a lot more, you know, factories and equipment, those kind of reinvestments. So for our purposes, they'll just say 30%. And, and the reinvestment rate will drop down as their growth drops down, going down to about 12% there toward the end. This gets us the free cash flows to equity. Okay, so all the work we did on the previous section gives us a stream of free cash flows to equity. I'm going to discount them back to present value using a 6% discount rate. 6% is a little on the lower end, but the company's balance sheet is pristine and they have a really wonderful business, so I think it's fair. Doing that uh, gives me a stream of present value free cash flows, plus the cash on their balance sheet, plus that terminal value there at the end, I'm gonna take the present value of that, gives me a total firm value of close to $211 billion, or $440 per share. Let's revisit some of our assumptions though. Okay, so some of our assumptions here, we've got a revenue growth rate, we've got the margins, and of course we've got the reinvestment rate. Any of those could be very different from what I've put in here. Let's try to modify a few of them and see what happens. So with revenue growth, I really can't see it being a lot better. I could modify it slightly, but overall I think it's a fair path here. The company already has pretty good revenues. They're not going to be growing at 30, 40%, okay? One thing that might be different is the net income margins. Again, I'm assuming kind of a reversion to the mean here, but we could see an overall increase in margins generally. So let's suppose we're starting at 32% and then increasing all the way to 36.5%. If we change that assumption and keep everything else the same, let's see how the value changes. Okay, so with those modifications there, you've got an intrinsic value of about $493 per share. Given the share price today as I make the video is about $458, that would make it a buy. I do like to check out insider activity. Research has shown that insiders generally know more about the company than us outsiders, and so we can learn a lot from their trades. You see 21 people selling the stock and zero buying it in the past three months. That's not really a great signal. As I look at the number of shares involved, it's not overwhelming. It's about 262,000 shares being sold. But again, literally no one bought any in the past three months. So that is a concern for me. All right, guys. So here are my final thoughts on Adobe. My first thought is that you should hit that like button. Okay, but seriously, I think Adobe has, you know, one of the safest balance sheets I've seen in recent memory. So it's a very safe investment in that respect, really low risk of default. And they have a wonderful business. They have a business that is obviously resilient to any kind of pandemic or whatever gets thrown their way. They don't have any big lawsuits pending like a lot of these big tech companies that have gotten into censorship and that kind of thing. Adobe has not taken any stance, to my knowledge, on any political issue. So they have not, you know, killed half their customer base, which I've seen with some of these other companies. So I really like Adobe. I like their profitability. They're becoming more profitable as they go. It's a wonderful business. So I'm willing to pay a bit more than I normally would. And when I do the analyses, it's pretty close. Uh, it really depends on your assumptions. Uh, just because I like a company doesn't mean I'm going to bend my analysis, though. And so for me, uh, it's just not not quite there. Uh, yeah, if things work out in a little bit better way on their margins, it does become a good deal. But I can't guarantee that's going to take place. So, you know, for me, I'm going to sit and wait. I'm really eager to buy them, but you gotta got to restrain that. You know, guys, remember, investing is like playing baseball with no strikes. There's no need to swing at it, okay? I analyze, you know, three or four companies every week. 
So eventually I will find good ones. I know I haven't found a good one in a while now. Some of you guys are thinking I'm just a perma bear, just always bearish on stocks. That's not really the case. Uh, I think that says a lot about where the market is right now, that I'm not really finding deals. If you go back through some of my older videos, you can see that I do find some good deals. And sometimes I recommend some that really don't turn out well. But, you know, I will keep an eye on it. I really do love the company. And I think if the, if the price goes down to, say, you know, $430, I'm definitely loading up on it. Because at that price, it becomes a good deal, even under my more pessimistic scenarios. So I can be safe with that kind of investment. Well, those are just my thoughts. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Give me your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching.